as socially distanced as we possibly can. We also know that kids are kids, and so it's, you know, they're not living with a, a in, in a bubble either and stuff. And so we will we'll do the best we can. We also. In, in that light is we know that we share equipment and things like that we make sure it's sanitized regularly even our even our groups because they will share gym space for example um, we don't do two groups at one time in, in the space and so that when a group goes in there and, and they play basketball for example where kids are separating themselves and using bas each basket and sharing equipment or each having their own equipment when the next group comes in we actually sanitize the equipment sanitize the space and the next group they can come in and, and, and use each of those baskets and each of that equipment uh, so we, we do have a, some very strict protocols in place um, and, and, our, and our goal is we, what we recognize is we're trying to mitigate the risk we know that Again, COVID-19 is out there, and until there's a vaccine, there's always going to be some level of risk. Yeah. And Dave, I, I was kind of just wondering, as the parent of a school-age kid, what you're telling staff about how, how the kids can be together. And small groups are, definitely sound like, you know, a, an important step, but anyone who's around kids knows that they're just like on each other all the time yeah yeah, what's, yeah. What's, and, is there a plan yeah, well and again i, I think that our, our plan is that um, parents understand the risk that they're they're also taking a little bit um, we are going to do the best we can we keep in the kids as isolated as we can be the small groups but you're right kids will be kids um you know kids don't they're not living with a, the, the, the little bit of the joke is a, a noodle around their head that keeps them far enough away or, you know, six feet away from every kid at every moment. And that's just impossible. And so we, we, we are upfront with parents. They recognize that. They know that um, there is some inherent risk with the kids being uh, close to each other. But th there is no specific six foot barrier. Our, our goal is to keep them as separate as we possibly can. But also that's why we do the small groups so that groups aren't uh, cross-contaminating even staff aren't cross-contaminating from one group to the other so that if god forbid there is some sort of uh, uh outbreak or response then we've isolated it within itself and so that the groups aren't again cross-contaminating one another uh, but we've been doing this now for 10 weeks um, we have not had an instance at all you know we also do a health check before everybody comes into our programs as, as you'll see and and not only is it a simple asking us certain questions of have you been around anybody or exposed to anybody with COVID-19 we do a temperature check we do a health screening at are you showing any signs of uh, or symptoms of fever, cough, a series of things, just to make sure that before they even enter our programs, we've lessened that chance for us. Can we do that for every every participant, every parent that comes into the classrooms, any staff, any vendors, anybody that's preparing meal, all of that is done in as a safe manner as we possibly can. Dave Morgan leads the YMCA of Greater Kalamazoo. Dave, good talking to you. Good, thank you. I appreciate it. While the picture is clearing for day camps this summer, it's entirely a different matter for the state's sleepaway camps. The kind of places where in other times, Michigan childhood magic is made. Jake Jacobs is the director of Camp Henry in Nuego. Jake, welcome to Stateside. Thanks for having me. So on a scale of one to 10, if 10 were a typical year, everything right on schedule and finances looking fully solvent, and if we consider that one would be no camp at all in session, where is Camp Henry right now? Well, that's a great question. It, it feels a little bit like a yo-yo. Um, you could ask me that question again in five minutes and my number uh, might change. Right. Uh, you know, there's moments of, of great optimism and other moments where it feels like we're just pushing a rock uphill and we're wondering if we're ever going to get to the peak. But, um, you know, I, I think today I'm more I'm more optimistic than maybe I was last week. There's been some good positive momentum. So, um, you know, we're, we're hanging in there. We're going to continue to pursue all options until we exhaust all options to serve kids. Again. You know, I think certainly everybody has the safety of kiddos and staff uh, at the forefront of their focus. So sometimes I think that just requires maybe an extra level of review or a new set of eyes. And I think also one of the things that I've noticed is we're bringing people into that decision-making process that might be public health experts or medical professionals. And some may and some may not have a great sense of what, what a camp experience is like. So a little bit of is getting them up to speed on just what a typical camp experience is like and, and how some of their 
recommendations and best practices would, would really play out in a summer camp setting. Well, we have been hearing repeatedly that sleepaway camps are awaiting guidance. What does that mean? Who are you looking toward right now? We're glad to be partnering with the state licensing, uh, LARA, in the state of Michigan. You know, they're the ones that provide us with a license to be able to operate and serve kiddos. And, and the work group has been put together. It's working with state licensing and some policy advisors in the governor's office. And I've actually been one of the, I don't know, 12 or 15 camp directors throughout the state that's been asked to be a part of that work group. You know, my understanding is, you know, day camp's recommendations came out yesterday, which was great. And I think the word is there's a draft of those resident camp guidelines that are in the works, and I think they hope to share those with this work group early next week. What kind of recommendations did you bring up at, as the group advising Governor Whitmer was meeting? Well, you know, I think I'm, I'm honestly highly biased, uh, not only as a camping professional, but as a dad of three kiddos. But just pointing out that I think kids are going to be getting outdoors. They're going to be connecting with other kids. And, you know, kids just really need for their social and emotional and mental health to be out and gathering and connecting. And, you know, my point of view is wouldn't you rather have that happen in a camp setting where they're really well supervised, that there are structured activities, that there are activities, and there are camp Henry health staff on site 24 hours a day, and in many ways, I think the week that a kid would spend at camp is probably going to be the
on dit Dieu quoi
Yeah, so please do. Maybe we should. 